Hi there, my name is Dr. Bob Vernon. Uh, I was formerly with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada uh, for about 40 years. Um, I've studied wireworms for 30 years, and uh, today I'm gonna talk about wireworm biology, specifically wireworm feeding cycles, or when do wireworms feed on spring and winter wheat. So we're gonna start when things are relatively quiet in the winter months. Uh, from November to February, Typically, uh, the mean soil temperature in many production areas is less than 10 degrees Celsius or less than 50 Fahrenheit. And during that time, wireworms will move deep into the soil to avoid uh, harsh weather conditions such as freezing. And uh, we found them up to three feet deep in, in some fields. And feeding, of course, stops during this time and they basically go to sleep. In the spring, when the soil temperatures warm up to above 10 C or 50 Fahrenheit, the wireworms become active and they move to the surface. And they're very hungry at that time. They haven't eaten for about four or five months. This is your resident wireworm population that has been in the, in the field for probably several years. So they come up, they move to the surface, they respond to carbon dioxide and other cues produced by uh, various uh, crops that they feed on, such as grasses, weeds, germinating cereals, uh, winter wheat, that sort of thing. Now, the spring feeding cycle coincides with the planting of spring wheat and heavy damage to germinating seedlings can happen at that time, especially if you've got a field with a high population of ravenous wireworms that are very hungry. So this uh, slide shows some uh, typical damage to a spring wheat planting. It also coincides with uh, the establishment of winter wheat, uh, which was planted the fall previous. But uh, the winter wheat has uh, been growing for a while, so the damage to the established winter wheat is less. Uh, usually the wireworms are feeding on the root system. But high populations in a field can still cause some stand damage to a winter wheat crop. In the later spring, from May to June, adults move into the field, click beetles, and they lay eggs in the emerge spring wheat or the established winter wheat plantings, which gives rise to a neonate population in that field at that time. But the um, wireworms are very small and don't cause any damage. Now in summer, when the soil conditions become hot and dry, the wireworms will once again move deeper into the soil to avoid those harsh conditions. And during that time, uh, feeding typically stops in the field. Now, when you get into the autumn months, you have more rainfall, the uh, temperatures cool down a little bit. It's very similar to the spring. And the wireworms will once again move to the surface to feed. So uh, they go through a fall feeding stage. And once again, they'll feed on grasses, cereals, and other crops. Now, in our studies, we have shown that almost all resident wireworms, the guys in the ground, will come up to feed in the fall. And um, what we don't know a lot about is what the little uh, neonate wireworms do in the fall. Uh, their behavior is, is not well known, but we know lots about the residents which cause most of your damage. So during the fall feeding cycle, wireworms will feed on the mature root system of spring wheat crops. The spring wheat is almost ready for harvest at that time or may have already been harvested. So damage to that crop is light. But the fall feeding cycle can cause a problem with winter wheat, which is planted at the same time that the fall feeding cycle happens. And damage can be very high if the populations in the field are also high. So in our experience with various wireworm seed treatments, the results suggest that their, their effectiveness against wireworms in spring wheat in the spring should be similar to their effectiveness in winter wheat planted in the fall. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you want additional information on wireworm biology or uh, wireworm control, there are additional videos that you can access to do so. And I strongly encourage uh, that you watch these uh, for, for your own information. Thank you. Mm -hmm.